Hello, welcome to the first episode of the Little Woolly podcast. I'm Julie and I have my Little Woolly blog and this wool shop called Little Woolly Makes Yarn Store in Hastings, Victoria. So that's where I'm sitting at the minute in the shop, but we are locked down so there's the shop's shut to the public so I can sit here and have a chat without anyone coming in, so that's no problem. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd start this little podcast to share things that are happening in the shop and um, things that I've been making um, and any new things around, patterns that we've seen, that sort of stuff. So tonight, today, I thought I'd um, show you what I've been making recently, which seemed to be quite interest. People were interested on um, Instagram when I showed the photos of it recently. This is a... This is my bottle scarf and this is crocheted so it's getting quite long uh, it's just a big tube started here this is the bottom of it yeah, so you can just see it's like a big tube of um, bubble stitches done in the round so all of the tails are in the inside it's a bit messy on the inside you can see but really I don't think that matters so much I'm just gonna leave that all in the middle when I sew up the bottom. So it's getting quite long now and I think I've nearly finished. I don't know, it's going around my neck like this. It's very warm and cozy. So I think maybe I'll add another little, about that much more and then it'll go a little bit further around. I've been working on this since last year, early last year. The plan was to have it done for the um, Bendigo Sheep Show in 2020 didn't happen and um, hopefully I'll have it done for the, the sheep show this year which is on soon so it's very easy a few people are asking if I had a pattern at this stage I don't but I probably will write it up one day but if you want to have a crack it's not hard it's just um, two row pattern so you can sort of see the that's your bubble row and then you do a row of chains um, linking them set up for the next row of color it's, it might even be called pebble, a pebble stitch, I think. It's, it's a type of bubble with um, trebles, or US trebles, or um, UK double trebles. You make clusters, I think, of seven or eight stitches. Uh, yeah, very simple and just repetitive, but a really fun way to play with colour and stripes um, and use up great a great project for, like, advent calendars, sets and things like that where you have you know lots of different little minis and things I'm thinking of setting up another another lot of colors that I might start a new one once I've done this one because it has been has been pretty fun even though I haven't worked on it solidly but over the last couple of days I've done um, from there upwards so I get about two or three three or four maybe rows done a night depending on how much time I have or when I go to bed yeah so this is the bubble scarf and it's actually getting pretty long when you look at it like that so yeah it's been a nice project and a really good scrappy one yeah a few other things I've been making and, and this is in fingering weight yarn you could probably do an eight ply one it would be very big and bulky though so I found I thought the four ply was going to make it heavy enough and it is pretty chunky still the other thing I thought I could do with it is make it into a big, you know, a big loop. So it'd be like more like a cow type thing. And if, if I made it a little bit longer, I could probably get a, a double one, you know, a double thing to put it around my neck. But at the minute, it's not quite long enough for that. And the other way I thought you could have a play with this stitch is to make, um, I, I think I put on about 50 bubbles here, but you could probably put like 100 and make a big loop and just have it as a single cowl around your neck and maybe make it about two, four, six, eight, about 18, maybe about 18 rows wide and that would just sort of sit as a more of a, a thinner layer, like a single, a single layer rather than a double. Because this is quite a, yeah, it's quite a chunky thing, but you know, chunky's good. I don't have a problem with that. It's all good. And the other thing I've been making, which is knitting, um, is these beautiful little socks the little box socks from um summerly knits she's a, a designer on ravelry and has lots of cute sock patterns so these are the ones that i've been doing 
and they're really quick to do. I couldn't believe how fast they came up. That's why I've managed to get two done when I usually only get one done and then I lose interest. But I didn't lose interest this time, which is really good. Um, and the other thing is it's done top down and you do your color work and then you do the heel as an afterthought, which is really cool. Um, so when you're doing your color work, you just keep going and then you do your toe and your heel the same way. It was a really easy way to do the heel. Here's one I'm doing. This is the next pair I'm doing. This is this was a high contrast um, color choice with the light color and then the blue. Um, but this one I'm doing more of a low contrast, a low low value um, color thing with the pale pink and the piggy bank. So that multicolored one is piggy bank from Hedgehog Fibers, and the pale pink. You could use their Harajuku or um, something like that, but I'm using just a baby wool, which is a pale pink. And then the green is a Metropolis, one of the Metropolis sock colors. It actually looks fairly blue in this video, but it's a bit more yellow. So it's more of a, a bright grassy green rather than that emeraldy green. Uh, yeah, and they're coming out well. And you can sort of see on here that red line is where you put your waist yarn for your after foot heel. So I've nearly, I'm going to graph these toes off. I'm up to the kitchen of stitching those. And then I'm going to go back and pick up the stitches around the, around the waist yarn and knit the heel, um, which is done the same way as the toe, which is pretty cool. So it's not hard at all. And I'm finding it easy to do them on these um, longer circulars and use the magic loop method. So yeah, they've been really fun. And there's so many combos. I just want to knit all the socks now because there's so many things you could do. Like all these little, I actually really like this color. I'm going to do one with this color and maybe this as that make grid. And then you could stick this as a contrast for the heel and toe. They're little minis from um, Hedgehog. And I've got so many mini scraps. These, they only take like less than a mini for the um, contrast colors and maybe about 100, 100 meters for the for the main color so yeah they go a long way all your colors so i've got so many colors it would be great at the minute this is that's the one i'm using now which is hedgehog um, piggy bank but i really like um, this one too which i think would look pretty cool so do a dark version uh, there's just so many but anyway, we'll see how i've got to finish one more of these before i move on to the next one so focus i have to stay focused on this one i'm doing now <laughs> otherwise it could just never happen um, I thought I'd show you also this little cute set. This is the little set of minis that inspired my first color. So that blue is in this one. Um, it's called the uh, Mini Kaleido Kaleidoscope Club. And I bought it from um, James Makes Things. He's a dyer from England. And I got this from his Etsy shop. You subscribe and it's like a surprise club. Really cute and I love the colors. This little guy is gonna make a very cute sock somehow um, so yeah that he's got some beautiful colors he's fairly new to the dyeing scene um, but yeah he's doing a lovely job I haven't got them in the shop unfortunately but one day you never know he's a bit busy at the minute he hasn't got um, time to do any more wholesale orders apparently at the moment so you never know though one day I might get him or um, little woolly makes to stock him yeah that would be really cool the other thing I thought I might talk about, oh, these ones as well. So these sort of little, this little kit, like those little scrappy packs, anyone looking for things to do with scrappy packs, really good for, you could do things if you're a crocheter, like this, like the um, bobbly scarf, that sort of thing, but they'd be really good fun for your, um, for these little socks as well, if you're, if you're um, looking for things to make with your little scraps. So that's a couple of things I've been making. The next thing I'm going to show you is something a beautiful fluff that came into the shop last week, just um, before we locked down. It's uh, the Lang Alpaca Super Light. So it's a fluffy, um, fine yarn. So it will knit up beautifully with all those four plies and things to give that fluff factor and the, give everything that nice halo that people are really into at the moment, or a lot of patterns. Uh, doubling threads up with the four ply and the mohair silk so this is an alternative to mohair silk um, it's a very very soft on your skin like it doesn't irritate me at all um, this is a oh, where's the mohair i've got a mohair so this is a mohair one this is some lanagato which is 
a mohair silk, which has really been very popular. We've been selling a lot of this. And that's the alpaca. So there's not a lot of difference in the fuzz factor. That would be the alpaca is slightly more fuzzy. But the alpaca can also be worked up as a, um, an eight ply. So on three and a half to four mil needles. So you can make really lightweight, soft, cozy um, garments. They would be like wearing a cloud. So you'd need about apparently uh, about 200 grams to make an average women's jumper. So that these are 25 gram balls. So maybe eight balls would get you a nice little garment, something soft and fluffy. But anyway, that dev on the... I've taken photos and added them to the online shop. So there's a whole heap of colours. Really nice. They do these really nice soft colours beautifully too. Um, that's another one. Nice, eh? So um, they're all on the online shop at the minute. And I've got to add them to the menu so they're a bit easy to find. But they are up there. So yeah, that's um, what's been happening around here. Oh, I was going to show you these. Let's have a look at these really cute little... Uh, um, stitch markers that I got from Mavis Castlemaine. See these little guys there? <laughs> these are little, um, if you're a child of the like 80s, 70s and 80s, there's the pack, these little Pac-Man. Very cute. And these ones are little snails. So cute. Don't she do a gorgeous job? They're all, I think um, she must have, I think she's got an Etsy shop or I'll just if you just googled Mavis Handmade, you'd probably see lots of different ones she has. Got those cute ones as well. And these little cute little cat faces. Hang on, where are they? These are little cat faces. So these little stitch marks, she's got lots of interesting knitting notions. But that's, yeah, aren't they cute? So yeah, I got those when we had, went up to Yarra Valley a few weeks ago to the Yarra Valley Yarn Festival, which is a really fun day. Oh, and I also got these ones from Chloe at um, Woolen Works. These are gorgeous. These are nice big chunky stitch markers, um, resin based stuff. Chloe's got some gorgeous resin work and also some really lovely wool, hand dyed wool. So um, that's another one to check out as well, Woolen Works. So yeah, all these local girls doing really good stuff. So that's probably all I have to really chat about at the minute. It's only a short one today, but just a little introduction. Hopefully I'll get better at these. I know I'm probably a bit boring, but, um, you know, we'll work on it. And Mal will be back next week, so I might get, we might even have a chat together on maybe the next episode and show you some, whatever we've, she's been working on while we've been locked down. I can't wait. She's probably knitted up a storm. And I'm going to go home and try and finish this cowl and this sock and all this scarf I mean um, and come back to you and I'm going to do some winding I've got to make some little some more of the eight ply um, 50 gram color sets for things like the like this blanket up here and stuff like that the speckled, speckled square blanket so that's what I'm going to do this afternoon um, and then that'll be about it it'll be good all right thanks for tuning in and I'll be back maybe at some point. We'll see how this goes. It's a bit strange talking to yourself for a video, but um, I'm sure I'll probably get better at it and maybe, maybe get used to it. So um, thanks for tuning in. See you later. Bye-bye.